Hi everybody, so today we are looking at the molecule groups monosaccharides and disaccharides. So monosaccharides and disaccharides along with polysaccharides, um, these are all groups of molecules that we would call carbohydrates. And carbohydrates all have a general formula which you can see here. So what this means is any carbohydrate will always have Hy uh, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen atoms, but more importantly the hydrogen and the oxygen will always be in a ratio of two hydrogens to every one oxygen. They won't necessarily be joined together like that, okay, it's not lots of water molecules, but the hydrogen atoms in any carbohydrate there will always be twice as many of them as oxygen atoms. And that's where the hydrate part of carbohydrate comes from, the hydrate refers to water. Okay, so monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. Mono and disaccharides are sugars, so these are very small molecules. So sugars are a subsection of our carbohydrates. Um, polysaccharides are carbohydrates, but they are not sugars because they are very big. So this could represent a monosaccharide, okay? So it's a sugar and it's a single unit. This would represent a disaccharide, so di meaning two. Um, so two monosaccharides joined together by a covalent bond would make a disaccharide, so that's also a sugar. But then polysaccharides, poly meaning many, so this would represent a polysaccharide, and polysaccharides actually are usually sort of thousands of subunits long. So this polysaccharide is a carbohydrate, um, but we are not interested in polysaccharides today. We're only interested in mono and disaccharides. Now, our monosaccharides also have a general formula. So we can take this general formula and we can use it to work out the specific molecular formula of any monosaccharide. So if we start off with hexose sugars, so this is another group. So monosaccharides are a subsection of our carbohydrates and hexose sugars are a subsection of monosaccharides. So these are monosaccharides which have six carbons. So we can take that six and we can plug it into our general formula here. So what that means is if our general formula is CH2O-N, we put the 6 in place of the N and then multiply everything inside the brackets by 6 to get our molecular formula. So what we would have, C6, 2 times 6 is 12, so H12, and then O6, and then get rid of that. And this is the molecular formula for hexose sugars. Now you might recognise this because glucose is the, uh, is the most common monosaccharide and it's an example of a hexose sugar because glucose has got six carbons in it. Now another group of monosaccharides um, are the pentose sugars. So they have got five carbons, which means that our general formula for our pentose su uh, sugars or our specific molecular formula for, pen for the pentose sugars would be C5, H10, O5. And examples of pentose sugars are ribose and deoxyribose. So ribose is the monosaccharide, the pentose sugar that you find in RNA, and deoxyribose is the pentose sugar that you find in DNA. There's another group as well, which is very common, which are triose sugars. So triose sugars contain three carbon atoms. Uh, now, interestingly and importantly, the hexose and pentose sugars, because they've got um, they've got enough carbon atoms that they can actually form a ring and we'll look at that in a moment about how the, um, the molecular formula is then turned into a structural formula so what it actually looks like. Okay, so um, making disaccharides then. If we have a glucose molecule and we bond it to another glucose molecule, we will make the disaccharide maltose. And when this happens, you also make a water molecule. So glucose plus glucose will make maltose plus water. If you have glucose but you add galactose, so galactose is the name of another monosaccharide, we would make lactose. So lactose is the disaccharide that you make, and again, you would make water. And then finally, if you had the monosaccharide glucose and you reacted it with the monosaccharide fructose, you would make 
the disaccharide sucrose plus water. So this is, these are the combinations of monosaccharides into disaccharides that you need to know. Now when we go from monosaccharides um, to make disaccharides, this kind of reaction is called a condensation reaction because water is released each time. So to go the other way, if you have a disaccharide, so let's say we have maltose, and we want to um, break that maltose up and give us two glucose molecules. To do that, we also need to add water. Uh, these are all enzyme-controlled reactions as well. So maltose plus water will give us glucose and glucose. And if you go that way, so if you start with your disaccharide and add water, that's called a hydrolysis reaction. Hydro because you need water, and lysis because it's something, something bigger is being split into something smaller. So lysis means splitting. And we will look at the details of how we make monosaccharides and disaccharides using these two kinds of reactions in another video. So first of all, let's um, think about the structure of glucose. So we know the molecular formula. We need to think about the structural formula. Now, very importantly, there are two different kinds of glucose we need to be aware of. We have alpha glucose. This symbol means alpha and beta glucose. Please note this is not just a capital B. Okay, it comes down underneath it. So this means beta. And these two types of glucose are called isomers. They have the same molecular formula, but they have a different structure. So the molecular formula for both of these isomers is C6H12O6. So let's start off by thinking about alpha glucose. Now we know we've got six carbons. We're going to start off by drawing oxygen though. It's just easier that way. And then from the oxygen we're going to draw the carbons. So there's our first carbon, our second, third, fourth and fifth carbon. That makes our ring and the sixth carbon is here. So this is our basic structure, but obviously we haven't got enough oxygens or hydrogens in there yet, and the placement of them is very important. So first of all, we're going to start with our carbon here. This is carbon one. And carbon one, as you can see, has got a hydrogen coming up above the carbon and an OH coming down underneath. And when you have an OH like that, that OH group is called a hydroxyl group. Now, this is kind of like a sort of a 2D representation. Um, remember, this is a three-dimensional molecule. And this ring, actually, if you think of it a bit like um, sort of like a plane, um, as in sort of like, you know, you've got different planes. And what you can see here, I'm trying to draw, is that we've got molecules that can be above or below that plane. So here is like our, the grey bit represents the ring structure and you can see the hydrogen sticks above and the hydroxyl group sticks down below. So that's what it looks like in three dimensions. And then we've got to put our other hydrogens and hydroxyl groups on and it's important that you put them in the right place. So the second carbon, we've got hydrogen above, hydroxyl below. The third carbon, is the other way around, the hydroxyl group above, the hydrogen below. Fourth carbon, hydrogen above, hydroxyl group below. And then we've got our sixth carbon is CH2OH. Don't forget this carbon here. Remember that carbon atoms have to always have four bonds. So if you look at, um, let's take this carbon here, there's one bond, two, three, four. This carbon, one bond, two bonds, three bonds, four bonds. There have to be four bonds coming out of every carbon. At the moment, carbon five has only got one, two, three. People often forget to put another hydrogen there. So this is now our completed structure of alpha glucose. Beta-glucose is almost identical, so we've got the same ring structure, but this is the difference. 
the hydroxyl group on carbon one is above the carbon ring and the hydrogen is below. So this middle one now represents beta glucose. I've swapped the hydroxyl group and the hydrogen around. Everything else is exactly the same. Get rid of that so we don't get confused and let's just complete our beta glucose. You can see that everything is the same. There we have our two structures and you do need to be able to draw both of those. Okay, that's all for now. Thank you very much.